So let's see how to do a problem involving friction uh, and forces. So we're going to calculate the deceleration of a snowboarder going up a 5 degree slope, assuming the coefficient of friction for waxed wood on wet snow. So that means we have to look this number up. We have to look up what the coefficient of friction is between wood and snow. And we can find this number. This would be mu equal to 0 0.100. And I have this ski border, uh, snowboarder, going up a slope. So I'm going to draw a nice big picture so we can actually see all of this. Here's my slope. It's going to be 5 degrees. Here's my snowboarder. He's a box because physicists love boxes. And he's going to be moving up this slope. He's going to be decelerating as he moves. So I need to draw a free body diagram and identify all the forces. Well, I know that there's a force due to gravity acting on him, pulling him straight down. We'll call that the force of gravity, or W. Uh, stands for the weight. We know there's a normal force, because he is in contact with the surface of the incline. That's going to be perpendicular to the incline. So that's going to be our normal force. We'll call this N. And then we know he's decelerating as he's going up the incline. So his motion is kind of taking him up. There's no force carrying him up the incline. But the, the motion is going up, and the force of friction is slowing him down. Must oppose that motion. So the force of friction must be going down the incline. This is where these kinds of problems get a little bit tricky. We need to pick a coordinate system to use. Normally, we're used to taking x direction and y direction as being left and up. Now, what I can see here in this picture, I, I have gravity going down, but then I have friction acting at an angle relative to gravity, and I have the normal force acting at an angle relative to gravity going down. So I maybe don't want to choose my normal coordinate system. I can choose whatever one I want, and if I could take this coordinate system and rotate it, so let's see if we can figure out how to do that. If I take this coordinate system, and I'm going to take that, and I'm going to rotate it around. So if I can imagine taking just this coordinate system and spin it so that it's along the incline. So that's going to be my goal. I'm going from up and down to being rotated so that my coordinate system is now along the incline. So let's see what that actually looks like. We zoom back out to our picture. And let's make our coordinate system along this incline. So our coordinate system, our x direction, is now going to be parallel to the incline. And our y direction is now going to be perpendicular to the incline. This is a bit tricky, but I just rotated this. So it turns out that when we do that, we can actually draw a picture so we can break our W into the X and Y components. So now W is acting downwards in this coordinate system. So it's not actually in the X or Y direction, it's in both. But I can project. I can figure out how much of it is going uh, kind of perpendicular to the incline and how much is parallel. So I can draw a nice little vector going down that's going to be my W in the X in the Y direction. And I can draw a W going in the X direction parallel to the incline. Now again, this is because I took my coordinate system and instead of it being up and down, I spun it around so that now the Y direction is perpendicular to my incline and my X direction is parallel. So I need to break this weight vector into the components that are perpendicular to the incline and parallel to the incline. It turns out when I do this approach, I actually know what this angle is. By rotating this coordinate system, this angle right here is going to be equivalent to the angle of my slope. So that's going to be 5 degrees. So this is setting up a new coordinate system that I've rotated around, and now I can actually do this problem. So we're going to clean this up a little bit uh, and see if we can make sense out of the free body diagram. So we've just redrawn our pictures so that we know what all of our forces are like. We've got the normal force going up perpendicular to the incline. We have the force of gravity, the weight, going directly opposite that normal force. We have the force of friction acting down our incline. And we have Wx, the weight of gravity in the x direction. 
that combined to give us this total weight, um, which turned into components because we rotated our coordinate system. So our next approach, once we have this picture in the free body diagram, is to identify what's going on in each direction. So what's going on in the x direction, we'll do a sum of forces. The sum of forces in the x direction is going to be equal to the negative friction minus the force of gravity, the weight in the x direction, and that's going to be equal to the mass times the acceleration of this in the x direction. So I can, uh, looking for the acceleration, so what I probably want to do is I want to start plugging things in and see how simplified I can get this in terms of just finding what x is. So I can get x by itself if I divide both sides by m. So let me go ahead and do that. So I'm going to get negative friction due to kinetic motion minus the force of gravity, the weight in the x, all divided by m is equal to a in the x direction. I can plug and chug some equations into this. The negative force of friction, the equation for friction, is mu k, which I know, times the normal force, minus wx, which is going to be the mass, times the gravity, times some portion of this triangle that we have here. Now if I look, I have the weight, which is this mg, and I need to multiply it by either sine or cosine to get the projection in either the x or the y directions. And based on where my 5 degrees is, my wx is opposite to that 5 degrees, so I'm going to have a sine of 5. And I divide this by m to be equal to a sub x. So there are a few things that I can take stock of that I probably want to find. Uh, I know what mu k is, so I know that number. I don't have to worry about that. The normal force, I want to figure that out. The mass, I don't know what the mass is, so maybe I need to find the mass. G is the acceleration due to gravity, 9.8. Sine of 5, I know what that is. And still the mass, we don't know what the mass is. So there are some equations, some numbers that I need to find. I'm all done in the x direction. This is everything I can find. So let's switch to uh, seeing what we can figure out in the y direction. So if we write the sum of forces in the y direction, we have the sum of forces in y is equal to the normal force, which is acting perpendicular, minus the weight in the y direction. And that's going to be equal to 0. Because if we look at our picture, let's draw our slope, quick little picture, I am moving parallel to this incline. That's the only direction that I have motion in. I'm slowing down parallel. I'm not bouncing up and down as I'm going along this incline. So that means that my motion perpendicular to the incline has to be equal to zero. So this helps us out because then it tells us that the normal force is equal to wy by just moving our wy, doing some algebra to add it to the other side. Then our normal force is going to be equal to w times the cosine of 5 degrees. We can go back and look at our triangle and see that our wy is the adjacent side of our rotated coordinate system. So then we have that the normal force is equal to m times g times cosine of 5. And I can take this and I can plug it in to what I have uh, solved for to find an equation for A. So we can remind ourselves what our A equation was. A was equal to negative mu times the normal force minus m times g times sine of 5 all divided by m. And by going into the y direction, I solved for the normal force. So I can plug that in to get negative mu times m times g times cosine of 5 minus m times g times sine of 5. Then I can divide all of this by m. If I look closely, I can see algebraically I have an m in every single part of this, so the m's will cancel out, and I end up with an equation for a that's equal to negative mu times g 
times cosine of 5 minus g times sine of 5. I can plug my numbers in. I get a negative 0.1 for mu times acceleration due to gravity, g, which was 9.8, times cosine of 5 minus 9.8 times the sine of 5. And when I plug these all into my calculator, I get an acceleration that's equal to a negative 1.83 meters per second squared. I can take stock and see if this answer makes sense. The number, uh, maybe I have no clue if that's right, but I can see that the magnitude, the uh, direction is negative, which makes sense because this is a deceleration because I'm going to slow down as I'm sliding up this hill.